Hello and welcome to the Technology Will Save Us Learn to Solder video. My name is Andrew and I'll be Rob talking you through how to solder and all the various techniques. For this video I'm going to need to make sure that I'm very safe so I'm going to need some safety glasses. I'm also going to need a board that I can solder on. We're also going to need a soldering iron. We're also going to need some solder. We're also going to need some side cutters and just in case you make a mistake a desoldering tool. We'll also need something to solder. So when soldering, it's really important that we make sure that we're very safe. We need to make sure that we're not going to be A, hurting yourself, or B, hurting others. So that's why, when I'm soldering, I always wear my safety glasses. Your soldering iron is your most important tool. It also can be very harmful if you touch the end of it. You need to make sure that you can reach and pick up your soldering iron without anything being in the way. In our soldering iron here, we have this black piece here which is made from rubber. It allows you to pick up your soldering iron and use it for many hours with lots of comfort. This metal bit here is the area that gets hot. It's the area that makes the connections between your components and your PCB or whatever you're soldering. And it's important to make sure that you never ever touch this piece. It's 300 degrees or roughly about that. It's still really hot, so make sure that you don't touch and you don't touch anyone else with it. When we're soldering, we always use something to protect our table that we're working on. In this case, we're using a bit of grey board. There's many different types of solder, from really, really thick stuff like this, which is what you use in plumbing, to really, really thin stuff, which is what you use for surface mount components. We're going to be using a 1mm thick piece of solder. We also have got lead-free solder. It's important to make sure it's lead-free because lead can be quite poisonous. So always make sure that you're using the right solder for your job. If your soldering iron tip is not clean, it won't make good solder joints. The solder won't stick to it like this, which is called tinning the tip of the soldering iron. And it makes your life a lot harder when you're trying to make solder joints. If you've got some solder on the tip of your soldering iron, it's important to make sure that you can clean it off. In this example we're using some wire wool, but you can also use a sponge, with a damp sponge also, which is in some soldering kits. As we mentioned earlier on, I'm going to be using the blue tack to stick my circuit board of the DIY instrument to my area where I'm going to be soldering. Our soldering iron is currently sitting at 295 degrees centigrade, which is a good sort of temperature to be soldering with this solder. And we need to make sure that we're heating up both the leg of the component and the circuit board. Instead of putting the solder on first, like I would do here, and then transferring it onto the circuit board, I'm going to make sure my soldering tip is really clean, find the area that tins really well, and hold it on the circuit board, making sure I'm touching the leg of, this, of the component. I'm going to allow them to heat up for maybe about 3 seconds, and then I'm going to take a piece of solder, making sure that my fingers are nowhere near the soldering iron, and gently feed in the solder. I'm then going to remove the solder and keep the heat on it. This allows the flux in the solder to move the solder itself around the component and the PCB connection. I'm going to remove the soldering iron, clean it off and place it back in its holder. That's the important part, making sure it's back in its holder so it's not going to be sitting on the desk or getting in anyone's way. So we've talked about making a correct solder joint, now we're going to talk about what happens when it goes wrong. What happens when you add too much solder? If you add too much solder, you get a massive blob of solder. It looks a bit like an apple. It's got loads and loads of it. It's a big ball between your PCB and your solder joint. You don't want this. You want nice smooth peaks coming, rising from the PCB, going up the leg of the component. If you get something like this, you're going to have to use the desoldering tool. So using the desoldering tool, it's a pump action vacuum. It sucks up all the solder. To use it, you heat up your solder joint that's gone in correctly, you wait until it's molten, it's all liquidy, and then you just position the desoldering tool on the open side where there's lots of space. You then just press the button. Press the button and it'll suck all the solder away. Like here, I now have a perfectly clean joint. Let's talk about what happens when you don't have the heat on the PCB and it's only on the component leg. You end up with a jaggy amount of solder just on the component leg. So, but why? It forms a little ball, it's not touching the PCB. But how do you fix this mistake? Well, to do that, you've got a blob of solder, and all you just do 
is move the soldering iron so it's touching the PCB and also touching the blob of solder on the component leg. There still should be some flux in the solder which allows it to move. Flux is a bit like oil on gears or something. It allows the gears to run smoothly, so that's what the flux does, it allows the solder to move nice and freely. So when you're soldering, the flux allows it to move and adding the heat onto the PCB will allow the solder to move down from the ball on the component leg down onto the PCB board and make your perfect solder joint. Once you've completed soldering up a component, you may need to snip away excess legs like on this NPN transistor here. Now these side cutters or snips have got a lovely flat side and a side with a dimp on. You want to be using the flat side, it allows you to get really really close to the component you want to be cutting. You want to be cutting just above where the solder is. Just enough so that there's you're not cutting away the solar joint. If you cut away the solar joint, it can damage the circuit board and can lead to further problems and lots of mistakes you want to be avoiding. Also, there's a health and safety aspect of snipping off components. There's a lot of excess force from cutting off components. You want to make sure that you're cutting them into the table. So just get your snips ready and in place. Hold it upside, hold it upside down to the table and just snip. The leg of the component will fly into the table and that's why we wear safety glasses just in case you don't. Thanks for watching.